here we are in the last week of September. We've just finished our non-conference slate. We've got a great opponent in Appalachia State coming in here, Center Park Stadium, Saturday at 2 o'clock, uh, opening up conference play, which is, you know, you, you try to get to conference play. You try to get to your healthy and, and ready to go. And, you know, we, we get to open up with a really, really good football program in Appalachia State. They're, they're a program that has, you know, set the standard in our conference for a number of years and have been highly successful for many, many years. And, you know, being, me being a grad and playing up there, I know everything about them. I mean, I know all their, you know, their, their, their coaches and I know their traditions and I just know what they stand for. We've got our work cut out for us. Um, you know, we, we've got to come off a, <clears throat> a tough loss on Saturday and rebound from it and kind of get rid of that as quickly as possible. Uh, we went out and practiced this morning and I think our guys had good intentions and, and, and pretty good focus after, uh, you know, a good game on Saturday. And uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get over a loss kind of like that, but uh, we've got to move forward. We know what's at stake. Uh, we know the Sun Belt is the conference that we're, we're trying to go and, and uh, you know, trying to set a standard for ourselves in this league. Uh, but we do have a true test in the Appalachian State Mountaineers coming Saturday. So. Appreciate it, Coach. At this time, we'll take questions from members of the media. As a friendly reminder, if you can keep yourself on mute until asking your question and then remute yourself, we would greatly appreciate it. Go ahead with questions for Coach. Sean, you said on the conference call a minute ago that areas that you guys have improved on since the first game, what are the top two or three places that you can put your finger on and say, here's where we're better? Oh, uh, run defense and run the football. I mean, I we've – Certainly established that defensively. I mean, our overall defense has been really good. I mean, it's been coming along, and it's uh, you know it's great to see them flying around out there this past Saturday uh, and, and making play after play after play, and then also for us to have the ability to go and rush for you know uh, the way we did uh, on Saturday as well. So I think those are two of the big areas of improvement that we we've, we've hit on. Uh, we've certainly got a lot more improving to do. Uh, we've got some areas that need a little bit more improving than others. But uh, we've addressed them, and we, we've started doing some things um, that I feel are necessary to make us a better football team heading into our conference slate. Coach, you talk about the defense it's kind of being a whole unit approach. Everyone's got to do their job. And so looking back at Saturday, now that you've had a chance to look at the film, who are maybe some of the guys that maybe flew under the radar, didn't show up on the stat sheet, but really helped set the defense up for success? I mean, you listen, you go through the roster, you see the participation, anybody that played out there, you know, you look at a guy like Javon Dennis, <clears throat> Javon probably very rarely gets uh, mentioned. And uh, he goes out there and plays his, his tail off each and every week and <clears throat> just does a really nice job for us. And, you know, our safeties are doing a good job. Our, our corners, you know, Quay, I mean, you got, you got all these guys out there that are just, it's, it's kind of the no name defense at this point because nobody's, it's not just a, a one person show, they're all just so critical. And uh, it, it's really gratifying to see. I love seeing defenses that go out there and, you know, just uh, have that combination of great group tackling, uh, unselfish nature. And they're doing that right now. <clears throat> hey, Coach Marcel, due to Sports Inquirer, you mentioned the rush defense. App State rushed for close to 300 yards against Marshall in their last contest. What challenges did, does their offense present to you and that you have to go up against on Saturday? Well, you know, they, uh, they've run the football well. I mean, since they come into this conference, that's, that's their motto. Uh, they want to run the football. They run a little inside, outside zone. They've got great backs. They've got <clears throat> very well agile, uh, tough, hard-nosed offensive line. Uh, and they've got great play calling that puts them in a, a situation to be successful. You know, some – you watch a lot of these teams and then they just run the football for, for to run the football. They don't really know a, a, a why or a how, and they just, they just call it. But these guys, they, they, they've got great film study. They know where to attack the edges. Uh, they know who to push around up front, where to attack personnel wise. And they do a great job with it, but they are, they are without a doubt. I mean, they can run the football on anybody. I mean, just sitting here watching them play the hurricanes in Miami. And they just, I mean, they steamrolled over those guys and, you know, everybody probably thinks Miami has a pretty good, talented defensive front, and they were whipping them all uh, all day long. What did you think about uh, Darren Granger's second start of the season? Obviously, he had some success there rushing, but still looked like he missed a couple of throws. 
there in the pass game and, and, uh, uh, but was able to move the ball, obviously. Yeah. You know, uh, we struggled uh, throwing the football. I mean, there, there were some things that we missed from a read uh, perspective, as well as, as just throwing the football and getting it, you know, in the position for our receivers to make plays. So I wouldn't say it was just a crisp contest by him throwing the football. You know, his run game right there, I think it was on point. I mean, uh, he, he did a really good job in there. I think he rushed for somewhere around 70 yards or whatever, whatever it is, minus the sacks probably, uh, and did a good job in the running game. But, you know, we can't be that one-dimensional. Uh, we've got to have our throw game. We've got to work hard this week on our throw game. Uh, and we've got to have a really, really balanced attack to really go and, and, and start pushing those points. I mean, uh, it's one thing to run the football well, but you, you're not really pushing the points unless you can get that thing in, in combination with the run and pass. One of the guys in the throw game that did not play, I know uh, Saturday night did see him on the sidelines, 20 days before, how's he progressing um, for this week? Yeah, hamstring injury. So, uh, you know, those hamstrings are tough. They, they just are. And, you know, Paint, he fought one. He's still fighting it. And, and um, you know, McCoy is now fighting the same hamstring bug. Uh, we're sitting in our staff meeting, and we had all these returning guys coming back, and all these returning guys haven't all been on the field at the same time. Uh, McCoy's a – he's a quick healer, and he'll go if he can go. But we're certainly not going to put him out there and have – um, you know, any chance of him further hurting that hamstring. So we'll see. All right. Any other questions for Coach this week? Yeah, Coach, Coach, a little bit on, on uh, Brown in the secondary. Um, just seeing more of him and what has he been showing you? Uh, Brown, you're talking about Brackley's? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, he's uh he's a hard worker. He's, he's, he loves working on a skill set. He wants to be the best. Um, you know, he's always, he's always eager to learn and that's a real good thing. Uh, you know, some of these guys get it naturally. He's got it naturally. And then he also wants to develop his education in the game of football and, and for, you know, and make sure that craft of his is all it can be uh, great, respectable young man. I mean, he's a, he's a guy you always root for because he, he does everything that you ask of a, of a player to do and, and, and more so. I've got one more, if that's all right. Uh, so you mentioned you're coming off the tough loss, obviously, uh, and I don't think there's probably ever a good time to play a team like Appalachian State, but does having the Sun Belt Conference slate start right now off of that loss and having that you know, ring season goal you always talk about being right there starting now, maybe make the motivation job, make that part of it easy going into a week when, you know, there could be a potential hangover because of the tough loss. You know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think hangover is a word we're going to use at this point in time because our team is, is really improving. Uh, we certainly would have loved to have pulled that victory out on Saturday and it would have been a big win for our program. Um, I told our football team in that in our team meeting this morning, you know, there, there are wins, of course, and, but they're different kinds of wins. You can go out and win and come in that locker room and feel very, very poorly about your play and, and kind of be down and kind of take the momentum out of you, even though you won the football game. And then there's losses. You know, some can be devastating losses. You go out there and get humili humiliated. You don't play well. You don't continue to grow as a football team. You don't compete. And there's some give up out there. We came out of that game. And, and, you know, I, I told him I, I was as proud of that football team if we would have knocked that damn pass down in the end zone on that last play. It was an unbelievable effort. Uh, they, it was an incredible job just by our players in general uh, doing what they needed to do. I, I think we've got a team that's rallying around one another. I think they want to be successful. I think they know how to be successful. Uh, we're sitting here at one and three, and a lot of teams in this country would be really down on themselves right now. Uh, I think we're just the op uh, opposite. I think we see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, and, and we know that we can continuously improve. We're going to be a pretty good football team and, and uh, hopefully have a say in this conference race. Any other questions for Coach this week? 
Hey, Coach, uh, David Brown, State of Atlanta. I got a quick question for you. seemed like there was a lot of Panther fans that made the trip out to, to Auburn for the game. Could you talk about what that fan section was like to you guys this week? No. Uh, tell you, that, that's amazing. You know, I, I, I we get fueled off of, off of crowds, and, and our, our fans were right there in that corner. I mean, we could almost reach out and touch them. And, uh, they, were, they were loud and boisterous. And, they really, uh, you know, just pulling us on and cheering. It's amazing to see. It's it's really good. I, I love the away games because you can see their faces. It's kind of right up there in person. And you kind of see exactly, you know, who's there and the noise they're making and the, uh, kind of the enjoyment they see of our team going out there and playing well. Um, you know, there, there's nothing – for whatever reason, I, I, I love the I love the fans. I mean, I, I embrace them. I want our, our, our team to embrace them any chance they – they can get, uh, but I appreciate any and all support that we get. And they were, they were loud. And, and those Auburn fans, it may have been 86,750. Uh, I mean, we may have only had 750 fans there potentially, but they were loud and they, they knew that uh, our Georgia State fan base came through for us.